And you can't talk about this rivalry without going to longtime Lansing journalist and MSU historian Jack Ebling and his WILS radio cohort and best Michigan buddy Tom Crawford. Yes, we invaded the Jack and Tom show to have a little battle for the bunion fun and one for this di for one of this dynamic duel, this rivalry is it's personal. It's Michigan, Michigan State, it's personal. And when Michigan State beats Michigan, Michigan State fans like a corkscrew in the spine and they twist and it hurts. <laughs> Doesn't happen often enough though. I know, but if it happens three times, it's gonna hurt. Michigan, Michigan State means more to me than any other sporting event of any, of any sport for me. He had the good sense as a University of Michigan guy to come to Michigan State to find a woman to marry. And your mother is the most beautiful, classiest woman who ever set foot on campus in Ann Arbor, except to go to the visitor section. And Michigan fans are already thinking that Denard Robinson's going to get the Heisman at halftime. I think they'll wait till the end of the game at least to present it. But if Michigan State plays the way it did against Wisconsin, it'll be just fine. Admittedly, Fred, I'm very scared because Michigan State has tremendous balance on their offense, and that's what that's Michigan's Achilles heel. Oh, your hair standing up, or your little <laughs> yeah, that's me. <laughs> it's always there. You mentioned your family. Yes, I found an old picture on Channel Six at a Michigan Michigan State game today, and I believe it's your youngins. 1994 on ESPN. Are you talking about that? They did a feature on us that uh, because they wore Michigan, Michigan State garb on it, and it was great. Going into this year, I really think the pressure is on Michigan. They're there, home field, they gotta win that because you can't fathom having three straight losses. And keep in mind, Fred, it's been 23 years since they've gone to the Rose Bowl. They're due because every 23 years, Michigan State goes to the Rose Bowl. Well, he talks <laughs> about that, but you have to remember, that's happened more frequently and more recently than Michigan winning a Big Ten title in basketball. But he doesn't like to talk about that. He says, I always default to basketball. Bad. I get the feeling Wolverines are a little irked by this countdown clock, huh? Well, I, I mean, personally, I got, you know, irritated Mark D'Antonio with, uh, you know, as uh, pride comes before the storm or, or, or before, the before the fall before the fall, or whatever. Fall. Mark D'Antonio's attitude towards Michigan kind of, you know, and he kind of got an argument aspect with, with Mike Hart. I didn't like that. The only day better in Mark D'Antonio's coaching career than Little Giants was when he sat there the Monday after the press conference in 2007, a great play by Mario Manningham, and Michigan got that comeback win, and he said, They want to mock us all they want to mock us. I'm telling them it's not over. So they can print all that crap all they want all over their locker room. It's not over. It'll never be over here. It's just starting. From that point on, Michigan State fans earned the right to think they could compete on the same field without asking for favors. They didn't need clocks or officials calls or anything else. They were in this series to stay. Earlier in this show, George Blaha said Mike Hart didn't do his school any favors with his little brother comment. Do you agree, Tom? Well, you know, Fred, I didn't like it. I, I, don't, I don't like that kind of you know, banter and stuff. I think what happened was when, you know, Mark D'Antoni initially made the comment, pride comes before the fall, and, the, and then the clock countdown. The players took that personal. I would have ignored it. And you know what? Lloyd Carr should have stepped in and not allowed. How, Lloyd Carr was still busy worrying about the crown of the field at Oregon. <laughs> <laughs> Break down the game. Give me a score. All right. I think that traditionally, the team that runs the ball better wins the game. This time, I think it's going to be the team that has the best balance that wins the game. Denard Robinson's going to have a couple of spectacular plays. You'll see him on ESPN tonight. I guarantee you'll see him on Channel 6 at 11.15. But I think Michigan State has a better defense. I think Michigan State has much better special teams. And I look for Michigan State, whether it's a win-one for D'Antonio, whatever the case may be, going to win this game 37-31. to 31. I disagree, Fred. Okay. What a shocker! <laughs> I think there's a factor that's never, the, the Michigan Stadium crowd is going to be loudest ever in the stadium history. And it's payback time. I think the Wolverines are going to pull this one out 45-38. They gave up 480 passing yards to Indiana. 45-38. That's why they play the games. When we come back, we've got to hear again from the head coaches. That's next. is brought to you in part by Buffalo Wild Wings. You have to be here. It's one of the most anticipated matchups this week, and it's all the state of Michigan is talking about. 
Who will hold bragging rights at the end of the day, the Wolverines or the Spartans? Two radio hosts can't seem to agree. From Lansing, here's the Jack and Tom Show. We're going to spend the entire show today talking about Michigan State, Michigan, the phenomenon and the game itself. Is there any chance that one of these two defenses will step up and, and make a difference uh, in this game uh, to determine the outcome? Well, I, I like Michigan State's chances, and I'm not just talking, you know, with, with bias here. I'd much rather defend one person like Denard Robinson than five other weapons. Denard gets the snap, looks right, runs quarterback, draw up the middle. He makes a man miss, cuts up field, there he goes, down the sideline, touchdown Michigan! you take away their one dimension, then I would think Michigan will struggle. But, you know, that's the challenge for Michigan State. He's just one player, but there is a, a two-dimensional attack uh, that he pro provides Michigan. Bernard complete the heavy right, stiff-arming a defender at midfield, chased from behind at the 10, the 5, touchdown Michigan! I think Denard Robinson is going to get somewhere between 120 and 150 yards. And I think he's going to a throw home day. for about 150 yards. And that will be a great day for anyone else, and it won't be nearly enough. UMass put up uh, 47 points right. and almost right. got in a shootout against. I mean, that does not bode well for the University of Michigan. I mean, this, uh, you know, I don't want to, again, maybe I'm biased. But this could be a two-touchdown beatdown. Jim, you're discouraging me. I don't like your tone. <laughs> <laughs> what were... percentage of Michigan fans would tell you that this year the Michigan State game is the most important? I think if they were being completely honest with you, they'd probably be 75 or 80 percent. But really? the bottom line is they're, they're not going to be completely honest with you. <laughs> they're just not going to. They're going to get a minute to their Sparty brother because you know you don't want to. You, you, you got to maintain that smug attitude towards little brothers. My car used to always address. That's the arrogance, ladies That's, and gentlemen. We've talked about that before. That's exactly the kind of thing that motivates Michigan State. The battle of these two defenses is our Buffalo Wild Wings matchup.